Hello and welcome back to Theatre Beard. If you're joining us for the first time, this is a YouTube channel specifically for students of drama, theatre or the performing arts, particularly those studying GCSE, BTEC, and there are even people who've been doing the International Baccalaureate who've been finding my videos quite useful, so thanks for letting me know. Today is another Wordy Wednesday video where we look at some of the language that we use when we're talking about theatre, because sometimes it can be very specific and it's difficult to know what people are talking about. But don't panic, I'm here to help. There is a new Wordy Wednesday every Wednesday, so make sure that you subscribe to the channel now to make sure that you don't miss out on any future ones. Today's Wordy Wednesday is all about staging and the different ways that you might want to think about putting a performance on, and a lot of this depends on the venue, the theatre. In the description box below, I have put some timestamps for this video, so if some of these ways of staging theatre are familiar to you, you might want to skip to a section that you may not have heard before or might not be too sure about and just want to recap. So let's get started with today's Wordy Wednesday. We're going to start by looking at proscenium arch. Now, proscenium arch refers to the archway in a theatre that surrounds the stage. It goes all the way around the outside, but sometimes people refer to proscenium arch as a way of staging theatre. In a proscenium arch theatre, you have the stage at one end with that big frame, the proscenium arch all the way around it. The stage is usually raised and the audience sit in a different place. The space that the audience sit in is usually raked, which means that it's on a slope. So if you're sitting towards the front, you're lower down, and if you're sitting towards the back, you're a little bit higher up. Sometimes the stage itself is raked and has a bit of a slope as well. This raking of the audience and of the stage and the fact that the audience face one direction and the actors face another means that sight lines are usually quite good and the audience can see everything that's on stage. One of the disadvantages of proscenium arch staging is that some of the audience can actually be quite far away and sometimes they might struggle to hear some of the actors, sometimes they might struggle to see them in the distance if they're really tiny and sometimes if they're so far away they may feel a bit disconnected from the action of the show. However a proscenium arch theatre is quite a popular design for theatres and I suspect if you've ever been to a West End musical you will have seen it in a large proscenium arch theatre. The next way of staging a production is closely related to proscenium arch but this time it's referred to as end on and basically end on means that your audience face one way and the performance is happening at the end. So it's exactly the same as proscenium arch, only it happens in spaces that don't have that big frame around the stage. So for example, the performance might be taking place in a fringe theater or in a studio space, but they might still be mounting the production end on, meaning that the audience will sit in one place and the performance takes place in the opposite end. Now we're gonna look at some ways in which the action can be brought a little bit closer to the audience. And the first one of those is going to be thrust stage. Now a thrust stage looks very similar to an end on staging with one major difference. And that is that the stage extends out into the auditorium, into the audience. It means that the audience are seated on three sides of the action. With the thrust stage, you still get the benefit of a backstage area because actors can enter from the stage area and then come out into the thrust space. Because you have audience on three sides, it means that it can feel a lot more intimate because the actors are physically closer to the audience. However, it doesn't come without its difficulties. So with a thrust stage, it's sometimes quite tricky to use a lot of scenery because obviously you've got three different perspectives to consider where the audience are looking from and you don't want to block their view from the action of the performance. That is also something you're going to need to consider when you are blocking out your scenes. So when you're thinking about where your actors are going to stand, you want to make sure that there is something interesting for the audience to look at regardless of which side they're sitting on. So for example, you want to avoid all of your actors facing the same direction because the people on this side are going to be staring at their backs. Next up is traverse staging. Now with traverse staging, you almost create a corridor or an alleyway in the middle and you have two banks of audience either side facing each other and the action of the performance happens right down the middle. It's a bit like a catwalk at a fashion show where you see everybody down the sides and at the end watching the models. So in some ways it's quite similar to a thrust stage. However, they haven't got that main stage area so they don't really have a backstage area to access. 
Again, we get all the same benefits with traverse staging as we do with thrust stage in that it's a lot more intimate for the audience. They can feel really connected and really in the heart of the action. However, the same issue with sight lines occur, meaning that also actors are gonna to need to really project their voices because if you're performing to this side, that side of the audience still needs to hear you. As a director myself, I have staged many performances in a traverse style, and one of my top tips is for you to work across the diagonals. So for example, if you have two actors that are in a scene together, if you put them facing each other, you lose this person behind the back of this person. Whereas if you change it to a diagonal, you can still see this person's face whilst looking past the back of this person. So the audience still have a way into that scene. They still feel connected to the action. Also, technically, lighting is very difficult in traverse staging in that if you have your light source from one direction, you're casting shadows in the other direction. So you do need to have lights on both sides. It's also really difficult from a sound point of view as well, because if all of the speakers are facing in towards the performance space and your actors are in it wearing microphones, then you run the risk of creating a lot of feedback, which is that squealy, screechy noise. And it's not very nice. Next up is theatre in the round, and that is when you have a performance space in the centre and the audience are around every single side. Very often it's performed in a circle, hence why it's called in the round, uh, but it can be a diamond, a square, it could be even a triangle, but you've got audience on every single side, 360. So again, many of the benefits that we've spoken about with thrust staging and traverse staging apply to this. The audience feel really connected, really intimate, but the same problems apply. It's inevitable that if you're facing one side, you're gonna have your back to somebody. So think about how you want to stage it, how you're gonna block it. And also it's really wise to use a lot of movement to make your actors move a lot so that the audience don't feel that they're staring at someone's back for too long. This becomes especially difficult if you have any moments where there's only one actor on stage because you need to be able to move them around the space to keep the audience engaged. I directed a production of Oliver in a cathedral and this happened to be in traverse staging. So we had audience on two sides. So when Nancy sings as long as he needs me, she's on stage all on her own, but I needed to move her through that space so that audiences on both sides still get a good chunk of the action. Whereas in the Prasini March production of Oliver, Nancy could easily just stand still, find a space, pick a point and belt out that song. And finally, we come to promenade performances. Now, any students of French might recognize that promenade comes from the French to walk. So it's basically walking theater. Promenade performances usually take place in non-traditional theater spaces. So it might be a performance taking place in an unusual location. Sometimes there might even be outdoors. So in promenade theater, the actors move through the space and the audience move with them. So very often there aren't any seats in promenade theater at all. Sometimes there might be seats to sit down for a little bit during the performance, but very often the action will then move on to another space and the audience need to leave and move with it. Again, this kind of theatre is very, very intimate because audiences can move pretty much wherever they like. However, it does come with a whole host of other risks. In promenade performances, you don't really have any control of where the audience are going to be because they can move about as they wish. So you might want to build in to your performance some ways of ushering the audience into particular spaces. If you are going to do that, you might want to consider ways in which you might be able to do it in character if breaking character isn't suitable for your performance style. It also means that audiences can get quite tired if they've had to stand up for an hour following a performance around and they might start to get a little bit distracted. Plus, there's the added issue of health and safety. There might be people who trip over. You need to make sure that the space is clear of any trip hazards, make sure it is safe for a performance to take place there and to consider every eventuality. And if you're concerned about any of these things, it might be best to just stick them in a seat. So that concludes today's Wordy Wednesday. Hopefully it's given you an insight into the different ways that performances can be staged and some of the benefits and pitfalls of each of those styles of staging. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there are new videos appearing on Wednesdays and Mondays, so don't miss out. And as always, saying nice things is free. So if there's anything you would like me to make a video about, or if you just wanna say thanks as some people have, which has been 
adorable, then by all means, pop something in the comments. And I'll see you next time.